Okay, hi there, welcome to another micro video. So what are the key factors that can cause a change in market demand for different goods and services? Well, this short revision video aims to take you through the key points to help your understanding of this part of the price mechanism. First of all, what do we mean by the term market demand? Well, market demand is the sum of the individual demand for, for a product from buyers in the market. And we define individual demand as the quantity of a good or service that a consumer is willing and able to pay, crucial uh, two points to that, willingness to pay, ability to pay for a good or service at a given price in each time period. Now, many exam questions uh, do focus on the concept of market demand and they ask you to analyze possible causes of shifts in demand and then build the analysis and perhaps evaluate the impacts of that on market price along with the revenues and profits for suppliers. So quite important to be able to distinguish between the demand for an individual firm's products, for example Coca-Cola versus Pepsi or Apple versus Samsung, and the market or the industry demand as a whole. The demand, for example, for home exercise equipment or the market demand for fitness watches, or the market demand for things like plant-based foods. So market demand is the sum of the demand of all consumers in a particular sector or industry. Now, uh, there are many factors that can cause shifts in demand, and I'll focus on uh, some of these explanations that might help to explain an outward shift in market demand. First one, of course, is the real disposable incomes of consumers, incomes after tax and after direct tax and adjusted for inflation. And normally, for most normal goods, as real disposable incomes go up, then there is growing market demand for goods and services, particularly those products with a high income elasticity of demand. Market demand can also be boosted by an increase in the size of a population. The demand for housing and healthcare and education uh, for example, would be uh, linked to the size of a population, perhaps itself affected by uh, rates of net migration. Changes in the age structure of the population can have quite a big effect. Uh, as the population ages, for example, there are often quite subtle but important changes in the pattern of market demand, uh, including, for example, the demand for social care, health care, the demand for sheltered housing, uh, and the demand for holidays. Availability of credit and the cost of credit, including the cost of credit card interest rates and loans and overdrafts, clearly affect market demand, particularly uh, for products that require some, some sort of finance. So one thinks about the market demand for new cars uh, or the market demand for home improvements. The relative price of substitutes might have gone up. So the market demand for tea might be affected by an increase in the relative price of coffee or hot chocolate. Uh, the, uh, the relative price of, uh, of housing goes up and that increases the demand for rented accommodation. It could be the case that uh, while substitutes are going up in price, complementary goods and services are going down in price, which might increase the market demand for related goods and services. And we know that demand is affected by uh, changing tastes and preferences, uh, which of course are impacted by advertising and other influential factors. There are also some speculative aspects to demand, particularly for financial assets and commodities. So if people expect future price increases, a uh, commodity like silver, for example, or copper, uh, that might be bought now due to speculative reasons. If you think the price will go up in the future, you may well be tempted to buy now. And that, of course, adds to demand. A couple of examples, applied examples. A lot of people now interested in investing in, as well as consuming, plant-based foods. There's been a substantial increase in demand for those. Companies like Beyond Meats, Impossible Foods, Oatly, etc. Some of those companies have, have now reached billion-dollar valuations, in part because they're tapping into the very strong actual and future growth of demand for plant-based um, milk, meats, frozen meals, and other other products. The data here, of course, comes from the United States. 
and uh, large chains are now pushing plant-based products onto their menus, including you know, McDonald's and, and Subway and, uh, and many others. So a lot of supermarkets now are emphasising plant-based meals as part of their offering. And it's clearly part of quite a substantial shift in industry demand. And another good example is the market demand for staycation holidays, particularly, of course, during the, the lengthy pandemic, during the COVID uh, pandemic and the, and, the, and the health crisis. So more and more people now uh, choosing to, uh, to take holidays at home, in part because, of course, travel and tourism has been subject to restrictions. Kind of interesting that uh, the average spend, this data comes from Travelodge, the average spend on staycation, summer holidays, and according to uh, data from the UK, is now hovering around £800. Uh, 800 pounds. As this chart shows, that's quite, quite uh, substantially larger than it was, let's say, 10 years ago. So how do we show uh, an increase in market demand diagrammatically? Well, it should be fairly straightforward. You take the market, you take your context here. So plant-based foods will be a, a good example. The initial equilibrium is P1, Q1. If market demand shifts out to MD2, that should in theory eventually take us towards a new equilibrium intersection between supply and demand with a higher unit price, a higher average price per unit sold, and an increased quantity traded in the market so the price goes up from p1 to p2 and the quantity increases from q1 to q2 growing market demand stimulates an expansion along the supply curve so market demand for many products is often quite volatile and certain and, uh, and having that little knowledge and understanding of the key factors that can cause shifts in market demand is a really important part of your understanding of uh, supply and demand theory and i hope this video has helped you along the way stay safe take care everybody and hope to see you again sometime soon